Good outdoor day, fishing freaks. Welcome back to the channel. Here in the Dangle Cave right now, just getting prepped. We're going on a little river adventure today with the crispy. We got a monster front coming in. I'm talking snow. Snow that may be happening in like 12 hours. I have a little suspicion that there could be an early spawn happening with the white bass species. We've had some warm rain the last 24 hours. Uh, we've had warm weather. It's been in the 70s, so I want to see. I want to go all the way up there and see before this cold front if there's any fish up there. And we're going to dangle around for some bass and stuff like that too. But I, this is my first time taking the crispy up river. It's going to get rough later, so I want to go right now. And I've also got something I want to unbox. I've got this thing in. I haven't even unboxed it, and I've, I've been pretty excited uh, to open it up and see. But I just wanted to open it up with you guys and see what we got in here. Bowtech, the uh, archery company, they sent me something in this box. I think it is uh, the latest and greatest of the bows, I suspect. So we're gonna get to that right after our little fishing trip, but doing a couple things with Bowtech this year, pretty excited about it. We're gonna keep it pretty simple today, y'all. I've just got a, a couple little tackle boxes. Throw some mini recons, uh, maybe some little rooster tails, things like that. You know, take a spinner bait or something for your bass. You got your basics covered, and uh, we'll just take like one bass rod, a couple of uh, smaller rods for the lighter lures, and we should be good to go. If we take a gander outside at our conditions, gloomy, very gloomy, but had the crispy charging all night. The trolling motor works about half the time, and it doesn't work for very long. I'm thinking about upgrading on the trolling motor. You know, this thing's original with the boat, which is amazing. Oh, fishing freaks. Nipley is an understatement. The cold front. It's it's coming in earlier than I thought, but we're gonna just give it a solid dangle here. Oh, I just found a daggum crankbait that I needed. It's a mini recon. I'm gonna be probably trolling, casting these, these little guys around, especially with the water clarity right now. Good color like that couple of poles. Don't anticipate the, the bite being very strong. Stick those right there. This is my crate. This is the crispy crate right here. So when I get ready to, to go out, I load this uh, crate up. They fit perfectly in this crate. The lake is flooded. I mean, we didn't have that much rain and it's, it's high. It's not the calmest of days. <laughs> And I've got a pretty long way to go, but we're gonna attempt it. We're gonna be buckling up today. I, I'm not sponsored by any life jacket company or anything. I'm just gonna tell you, I don't wear it enough. A lot of times I'm running places that I've been for years, uh, and I just, you know, I have a pretty good idea. I should wear it more, I'll admit that. But uh, today I'm legit wearing it because I'm a little bit worried. Boating can be dangerous, especially after rains. Nobody likes it when you're dead. So if you feel a little sketched out at all, put your life jacket on. I'm just gonna be taking the little GoPros. Here we are, launching into the mist. Okie dokie. Oh, Crispy, come on now. Get on off that trailer. There we go. Yeah. Oh, as soon as I came off the trailer too. A little bit of a hard landing. I'm quite tired of the cold, to be honest with you. Keep getting these little glimpses of spring and I get all excited. And then I go out the next day and it's, it's straight up winter again. I mean, two hours ago when I got up, it was 55 degrees. Now it's like 42. This wind is really strong, y'all. I might not be able to run where I want to safely. We're about to find out. Here we go. gonna happen y'all <laughs> this is bad I really can't see me running 
five miles up that way in these little two footers. I mean, this little boat, it will beat the rivets out of it. I think I'm just gonna stay up in the creek that I launched in and see where it goes from there. I mean, what can you do? I don't want the crispy falling apart, especially not in these conditions, y'all. That is like a fisherman fear of mine is being extremely cold, wet, falling in with waders, falling in when it's just really cold in a, a little boat. So we're gonna play it safe today. Got one of these bright colors right here. That ought to do the job. Start your engines, ladies and gentlemen. We're going up the creek. Fish on, y'all. Fish on. Oh, fish on. First little secondary point trolling back in the creek. Got some boat control issues we got to deal with. What we got here? Are the whites starting to run? Up in the creeks. Oh man, oh man, this baby's digging. I think it is a white bass. Oh yeah, fatty. Fatty. Woo, baby. Oh, these babies are getting ready to spawn. Let's squeeze that belly a little bit. See if we can get some row. Nope, but that looks like a big fat female. Choked on it. I'm not keeping them today, I'm just doing a little, I'm not keeping them today, I'm just doing a little recon, literally with the recon here. That's a really nice fish. Really nice fish. Let the fish go. My rod holder is literally my, my cheek and my cleat. This bait, how I've got it on 10 pound test, trolling it, it's probably getting around 10 foot. Oh, there's one. Oh, oh, geez. Okay. Neutral, neutral. All right, I'll put you guys in the thing here. Okay, here we go. Second fish on. Boy, he just lurched onto it coming right under the boat another fatty magoo another fatty magoo starting to move up here let's give you the old stomach test oh these things are fat y'all they've been eating up all winter getting ready to spawn this looks like it could be a female not really squishing out those eggs yet though golly those are just great eaters great eaters if I didn't already have some trout and a ton of deer, I'd keep them. But I will get the I will get the taste for these very soon. Very soon, my friends, you will be going into the grease. Nice fish. That's a really nice white bass right there. See, baby. I like using these bright colors in the early spring too. You know, if reds for bass. Usually the water's dirtier in the spring because. You get a lot of rains and the water's just off color. A bright white or pearl, a chartreuse, uh, a fire tiger, a red. Uh, those were all really good colors in the early spring. We're starting to get pretty far back here now. This is what I'm getting curious. We're in the back quarter of the creek. Not getting any bites back here. So I, it, it makes sense, honestly, that the fish are like halfway to three quarters of the way back. There could also be some crappie that are in that same region. So that's one that's one good thing about trolling. Um, you know, especially in a boat like this, where it's hard to move around with the trolling motor. I can figure out where the fish are with the crankbait like this. You know, four to seven foot diving. Just taking that, I can figure out where the fish are. It's also a good tactic for this time of year when uh, those fish are a little bit deeper. They haven't quite moved up. Wow. I feel like it's dropping into the 30s as we speak. The temperature is literally dropping like 30 degrees today. So I think it's probably a good idea if we go take a look at that bow now. Recon complete. Now let's put the old dangles aside. This is, I, I wanna put a bow press in here and start to turn this into a, <laughs> I don't really have enough room, but 
in a perfect world, I would have some more space and then this would also be an archery area as well. But let's go get the bow and see what we're dealing with. I have not unboxed this bow yet. I have not even cracked the seal. Just go ahead and let me know in the comments how many of y'all are into archery or are thinking about getting into archery. I'm really curious. It's the thing I enjoy the most in the outdoors. That rare time when you can get an animal that's coming really close to you and get to hunt it with a bow, there's no other adrenaline rush I've had that's higher than that. It's, I've done a lot of things in the outdoors, even hunting with a rifle, it's just, it's not the same. So let me know in the comments. Do you share my feeling? Do you think it's like the ultimate uh, hunting experience or would you rather do something else? Okay, let's pull this baby out of here. It feels light already, there must not be much in this box. This is the naked bow right here, y'all. And this is, there's two models of the Revolt. And I think I got the shorter one, I just can't remember which one it's called. This one's the 30 inch model, so from cam to cam, it's a little shorter. So what I like about this bow is it's very easy to tune that arrow. Uh, these cams are adjustable just by a couple of clicks and it just goes back into place. You could do it uh, on the fly. But shout out to Bowtech for sending me the bow. I do appreciate it. Uh, fishing is like my first passion and I've, I've made a business out of it and everything. But as you guys have seen on the channel over the past few years, I've doing mon done more and more hunting and I plan on doing more and more hunting. I really love it. Oh, we've got stuff to like set our bow up. We got a release, we got a three pin sight. We got our stabilizer. So I'm gonna do a little setup of this myself, everything I know and I'm capable of do doing, but I've got a buddy, his name's John Thomas Earl Larkin. He's basically got his own bow shop in his garage. He's been, he came out of the womb shooting arrows. If you guys watch the New Zealand series, well, first of all, go do it. Crazy, insane, love that place, wanna go back. But anyways, JT was the buddy I went with over there. We've been friends a long time. And I want to take this bow to him. I told him uh, it was going to come in. He really wants to see it, shoot it. We're the same draw length. So uh, it's, it works out really good. We can shoot bows together. And he's really good, and I'm not. So he can tell me what I'm doing wrong. That bag's mine? That was like one of the original OG Guggen Squad bags. <laughs> Why do you have it? Because you lent it to me when I went to New York like two years ago. I tried to give it back to you, and you're like, eh, I don't need it. I have plenty of baits. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> There's probably some good baits in there. Oh, yeah. It's my little bow shop. Well, no, you got to come up with a good name here. Larkin. Uh, what's a good know. L word? Layer. Larkin Layer. <laughs> there it is. There it is. We Dude, got I got this same bench. Dude. Perfect. Uh, it's so good. Bow setup. This is, this is my personal I tackle box. About this. Check that out right there. That's OG LFG. That was before LFG existed, actually. Dude, I, and I painted that. I remember painting. I was into uh, airbrushing there for a while. Yeah. And that's an original. They don't make those. those it's a fat A. Yeah. Bomber fat, fat A. Bomber fat A, great in the spring. And we used to catch them on Texoma on this. You should give away the squad bag on your channel. Okay. John Thomas Roll Lark and Hook and Arrow. Link down below. Um, we'll give away Justin's tackle box with everything in it. Oh my gosh! That Larkin? Was bad. Larkin? Larkin. What in that? <laughs> this, what kind Did of layer is this? Touch it? Wow, good thing you have a short bow. We can pretty much do anything here that a bow shop can do. So that's why I came to you, my friend. <laughs> this is one of the new Bowtechs, and it has their new little cam system where instead of a shim or a top hat or anything like that, you can set your bow dead center shot and then actually move the cam side to side to tune it. To tune it, yeah. Right. I've never messed with that. So Dude, we'll, that's so that's cool. So yeah, we're both learning awesome. today. I've got peeps got for peeps. my peeps. Nice. You got D loop materials? Oh yeah, look at this. Oh, dude. Look at this. We got, dude, I, get, get, you know what, what color you give, want? Give you me want. a Guggen green. Green? Hey, that's, that's, that's pretty close. That's pretty dang close. That's pretty close. I'm just gonna eyeball this thing. I wanna keep that tag on there year round. Like through the season? This one? Yeah. Just like the guys that wear the tag on their hats. Exactly. You know, Just have it dangling. It's a in the trend. Way. You know, it can <laughs> rattle them in with the tag. Yeah. This is really, I mean, this is like bare bones to getting it. 
pretty much fully rigged. I even got new fresh arrows cut today. Oh, we'll have you tuned before you leave here in just a minute. That's pretty cool. This mm -hmm. thing will be done. Bare to shooting. You know, you're going to be shooting this thing with a wrist strap, so I think if we make it a little shorter than three quarters, I think that'll be a good starting point. There you go. How many bows have you rigged up in your life? Oh, God. Just for myself, like probably 30. Anytime somebody has a bow problem, after hours I get a call. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. All right, we need to get your peep pipe figured out. First draw, ladies and gentlemen. Just checking to see, checking the measurements. Oh, boy, this one's got some poundage on it. Peep need to come down quite a bit. It needs to come down. Maybe Pretty just good. a hair more. Down? Yeah. The draw link looks good. Dude, the let off on this thing's fantastic. Guess shove it forward. Wow, yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. That's scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> That's different than my other bow. The let off's crazy, dude. You can sit there for a while with it. We're about there. So we're about to get first shot. It's pretty close. You just kind of look at it. Dude, what if we shot it and it's just perfect first time? What do you do? What do you do? Then you, you just a little don't prayer. touch it. Say, Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you for making this perfect and not a pain in my butt. <laughs> Please don't move. So Quentin is rigging up the, what do you call this? Like what, what is your special name for this right here, your contraption? Just our paper tuning stand. Uh, you got to do a Larkin something, dude. Oh. The, the Larkin laser method. Then we got something over here. This looks like a torturing device. Like what are you doing to people with this thing? Stretching them out? That's the medieval. Fancy, fanciest drawboard you ever seen. That's a minute, dude. I, I got one of these on the crispy. I was just cranking on this morning. I'm sure there's going to be comments about how there's fancier ways to tie peep. Oh, yeah. But this is how I like to tie it. We got a chicken warmer and a 2 by 8 <laughs> Winch them on in here. I got a stool. Does that say sex? What is that? What is going on here? Is this a sex board? Exactly. Oh. Oh. Well. I didn't, man, I didn't know what you were doing with this board. Should I be standing right here? Yeah, I think. Okay, so this one's hitting, that one's hitting. Let me take off just a little bit. Dude, I'm pretty impressed. This thing came from the factory timed. That, that's not something you see very often. It doesn't happen. That never happens. Well, good job, Botech. Hey, okay. well, that's from an unbiased guy right there. Wearing a Matthews hat. Botech is like, you're not ever allowed to put our bow in that contraption again. <laughs> this is it, the first actual shot. Oh, we got some slappage. Little left tear. Look. Nope, not left. It's actually a little low right. It's not that bad. I was gonna say, if it shot perfect on the first, the first shot, I wouldn't trust it. I'd say it's too perfect. So we basically unlocked this and we moved both the top and the bottom cam just a little bit to the right. Followed the tear. Getting closer. Watch the movement. Unlock and then rotate. Do like a quarter turn ish. That's pretty cool. That is cool. All right, I think I think this is gonna be it right here. It must have been me. No sir, it's a blow. Two bags, two bags. Yeah. I like it. I love this cam idea. That that was easy. Like not having to take the axles out to shim it. Not having to switch top hats. Oh, okay. You know, and these are all locked these in. Right? Things are locked in. Yep. We're good to go. Getting some blood on. It. Got us both the bullet holes, so I think that's confirmed. We are paper tuned and ready to do some target shooting, y'all. I did not think I was going to get that thing like ready to go today, but thanks to old buddy John Thomas Earl Larkin, we got it done. Where'd you get your kills your elk? New Mexico, New Mexico. or Arizona? New Mexico, New Mexico elk. Can we look at it? Yeah, can let's we go. take a peek? Let's go. Look at its mass. 
What's here's the white tail? What, this is the, the little white tail. The white right. tails are impressive, <laughs> but they don't take up. I'm gonna say three of these white tails are, are like the size of this. Okay. This one elk. Like you're sitting here on the couch. Yeah, I can't. Walk and then under. and then all of a sudden you're just. An elk is grazing above you. Day eight solo. Had to pack him out four and a half miles by I, myself. It, yeah, and then looking behind you there. I'm just, these are almost the same size. Okay, there you go. Oh, yeah, I can't believe you let him put this thing right here. Yeah, I didn't really have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the arrow hole or is that a bullet hole or an arrow hole it's a bullet hole somebody all we can think because of the way it's just a perfect hole is we think someone must have shot him when he was in velvet when it was still you yeah know, pretty soft because it would have broke if, yeah yeah there's no splintering or anything but i wow. can't think of anything else it would be <sighs> amazing all righty y'all we are back in the dangle cave where we started today's video it has been quite an adventure Tomorrow's gonna be absolute crap weather. Definitely not gonna be fishing. So I think I'm gonna go shoot this bow and get it sighted in. Fishing Freaks, thanks for hanging out with me today. If you wanna stay tuned for more, go ahead and just hit that subscribe button. God bless you, stay warm out there, and I'll see you on the next one. All right, let's try this again.